Man, I had to admit, this game is far more enjoyable than the original from a long shot. I'm glad I was able to get another shot at the game with the higher frames. Anyone play the original version on the Xbox 360? So outdated that it's unplayable. The remastered version gave me that crispy contrast. So dark that I didn't even know where I was at in some parts of the game. At that with higher frames, you got yourself a remastered game. I see the devs have to remind the player what game they're playing. I've always had a vivid imagination, but this dream unsettled me. It was wild and dark and weird, even by my standards. So yes, it began with a dream. Even the main character is aware of the lame cliche of beginning with a dream. Following a typical nightmare pattern, I was late, desperately trying to reach my destination, a lighthouse. For some urgent reason, I couldn't remember. I'd been driving too fast down a coastal road to get there. Yeah, you're not gonna tell me you didn't see a man standing in the middle of the road while you were turning. Especially when you had the high beams on. Can someone explain to me how this car is completely destroyed from the front? I mean, the front bumper broke loose, the hood is dented, and the engine is smoky. That must be a real crappy car if it can't handle one person. The radiator had broken when I hit the hitchhiker. The car wasn't going anywhere. There are plenty of plot holes in this game. I'll be exposing every single one of them. But the fact that Alan can't get back in his car when he clearly stated he needs to head towards the lighthouse is just dumb. Oh, so you're going to tell me Alan hit someone so hard that the trunk of the car popped open? Come on now. You don't even recognize me, do you, Ryder? You think you're God? <clears throat> you think you just made us stuff? Play with people's lives and kill them when you think you're <clears throat> How is Alan still hearing what he's saying when he's so far away? The graphics and frames of this game were heavily improved, but let's forget about the clunky controls, right? I'm sorry, but if you see a giant shadow tornado destroying everything on a bridge, maybe heading for the only shelter in sight could be good. Even I know staying outside for a complete stranger is a terrible idea. You gotta love how the game gives you an unlimited amount of ammo. Like we're just gonna place this box right here and put all this ammo in here for a very specific gun. If you aim the flashlight, you will drain the battery at an extreme rate. If you stop aiming, it won't turn off, but it'll recharge. This is brilliant gaming logic right here. Welcome to the O Dear Diner. Hi, I was wondering if you could help me. I'm looking for Mr. Wake, Alan Wake. Oh God, I am your biggest fan. Yeah, I'd never been that excited for an author before. I've met plenty of authors before, and not once was I excited. Rose jumped as if she saw the rock. Mr. Stucky. Carl couldn't make it. First of all, where did you even come from? Second, Alan obviously forgot that Rose literally just told him Stucky went to the restroom not even a minute ago. Rose. I'm looking for Mr. Stuckey. Carl Stuckey? Carl? Of course, Mr. Wake. He must have gone to visit the restroom. He'll be back in a moment. I would have asked Rose, did he even tell me Stuckey went to the bathroom? I'll come by later to check how you've settled in. And to meet your wife. First of all, I wouldn't talk to anyone who's dressed like they just spawned from hell. Creepy woman with a creepy voice wearing a widow's outfit appearing out of nowhere in the dark? You got lucky this time, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. Lady, you could have prevented all this chaos that will soon happen just by showing a light towards Alan. But of course, something like that won't happen because you need illogical characters in a game. The Andersons, they're uh, local musicians. We're waiting for Dr. Hartman to come pick them up. And Alan's supposed to know who Dr. Hartman is? Mission accomplished. The key and the directions. My hero. I got some flashlights, just in case. Hey, wait! Mrs. Wake! Your... Your keys! Okay, two cents here. One, how is it that neither Alice nor Alan heard Stucky screaming right behind their car? It's not like they had music going on. Also, Stucky, Alan was knocking on the bathroom door. You really couldn't tell him to give you a minute? The force plot demands is strong in this game. Lastly, what's the rush? You could have called them and told them they forgot the keys. Honey? Alan, I'm upstairs. I have a surprise for you. Well, hello there. I'm not the surprise. It's in the study. Go take a look. <laughs> okay. Surprise! 
Hold on, you're not the surprise, but you think a typewriter is a surprise? Small confession to make. I thought maybe you could write here that a change of scenery would get you past- Damn, Alice, you- Everyone Hey, keeps... hey, hey, just hear me out. There's a local doctor, Dr. Hartman. I read a so because Alan is having writer's block, that means he needs to speak to a doctor? Now I'm understanding why you thought a typewriter was a good idea for a vacation surprise. Alan? Alan? I don't, just don't. I don't want to hear it. God damn it, Alice. I mean, I would be annoyed too if I wanted some cheese, but my wife surprises me with a typewriter, but shoving it out of the way like that was uncalled for. Overreacting much? Think things through. <sighs> it's really not that serious. Calm yourself down. I'm about to catch a stroke for no reason. I need to know, who in the world is going to leave ammo and batteries in an emergency kit? I mean, in reality, you'll find things like health kits, but ammo for conveniently the right gun and batteries for the right flashlight is hilarious. Oh, thank God, Sheriff. Sheriff Sarah Breaker, you are... I'm Alan Wake, but listen, I was in a car crash. My wife, Alice, she's missing. Calm down, Mr. Wake. We were staying in a cabin on the island, on Cauldron Lake. There's no island on Cauldron Lake, not since the big eruption in the 70s. Please. I can take you there, okay? You look like you've taken a pretty bad knock to the head. Are you okay? Sarah asks if he's okay, right after telling him he looks like he's been hit hard at the head and watches him fall. Reminding the player again. Previously on Alan Way. What was the point of reminding the player what happened when they literally just finished playing the previous episode? This game wasn't released episodically. I know it's stupid, but it's just... Especially when I'm not prepared for it, you know? It gets to me. Is she really apologizing for her phobia? Tell me a story, writer. Okay. <clears throat> I used to have these nightmares when I was a kid. The dark really spooked me, too. When it got really bad, my mom gave me the- You know, I get every game is scripted, but damn. Can you at least try to not sound like you're reading straight from the script? The dark, I could just flip the switch and a magic light would scare the monsters away. Yeah, that's not some random heavy foreshadowing. Hmm. How do you feel, Mr. Wick? Any nausea, disorientation, anything like that? Mr. Wake, how are you feeling? I'm okay. My head's fine. I had to lie about my headache and memory loss. He'd send me to a hospital for tests. I couldn't leave without Alice. This is not a mental asylum, Alan. You do know that you can refuse treatment and appointment if you don't want to, right? Nobody's going to strap you on a straitjack and lock you in a room for refusing. I'll let you get on with it then. Sarah, uh, Sheriff Breaker is waiting for you. The sheriff wanted to see you in her office. I believe you'll find the sheriff in her office. You're good to go, Mr. Wake. Sarah's probably waiting for a chance to talk to you. Damn it, Matt. Can I please have a game that doesn't hold your hand? You did all that just by one kick? Can you tell me why you haven't kicked any Taken? I mean, if I have to waste four bullets on a regular Taken, you can conserve plenty using your strength. I'm Dr. Emil Hartman. I'd like to invite you to stay at Cauldron Lake Lodge. Did you talk to my wife? I had the pleasure of discussing your situation with her on several occasions. Did you set something up with her? I invited her here. My clinic is a place where... Oh, hey, oh my! Take it easy. Hey, nobody move. Get your hands off of my client. Who are you? I'm Barry Wheeler, his agent. If you have business with Mr. Wake, you talk to me. You yokels won't know what hit you once I sick my lawyers on your asses. No harm done, Sarah. I'm all right. I don't want to press charges. Mr. Wake, my offer still stands. You just got rocked so hard that you'll be treating that injury later. Yet, you're still willing to help Alan for what? He seems just fine. It's insanely obvious you're up to no good. I really need to go. Great to see you again, Mr. Wake. Later! What an airhead. Jeez, Mr. Takes a Swing at Everybody. This is not her fault. She's a very nice girl and, more importantly, a fan. You literally just met Rose. How do you know she's a nice girl? Yeah, you definitely want to let women use you for everything you got. Seriously, Al, you can't just go and meet a kidnapper. Those situations always end up in disaster. You gotta talk to the cops. She's my wife, and it's my call. Can we talk about this later? No. This whole thing... Wait here. Listen, you hit your head. Barry says Alan hit his head, which is true. But if that were to be the cause of Alan's hallucination, where is Alice, Barry? I don't see her around. 
And it's even more sinful that you aren't asking Alan where's his wife. Al? We should go to the sheriff or call the FBI? Damn it, Barry, they'll kill her. One, that is the weakest hit I've ever seen. Also, if that land breaks, Takens will be able to invade this cabin much easier. Perhaps that didn't come to mind, Alan. Deliverance all over again. Thank you. I'll wait here, Al. I'll hold down the fort. I'll be with your spirits every step of the way, Al. Walk through the door now. I would like to know why I'm still able to hear Barry from this distance. I knew I should have gone to the cops. This wasn't the smartest thing I'd ever done, but I was still angry with Barry for trying to talk me out of it. Alan, you told Barry you shot someone after aiming a flashlight at them. Mind you, he has never seen a Taken before. That's not something anyone would believe if they're sober. Saving the hero at the nick of time, cliche. Hold on, you telling me that when this random guy uses the flare, the Taken automatically explodes? When I use it, everyone just walks away from me as I walk slowly towards them. That flashlight's kid stuff. The flares will keep the bastards away. First of all, the flashlight is unlimited source when the flares are very limited. On easy mode, they're very common. But has anyone played this on hard recently? It's like I'm playing hardcore on Resident Evil. You get crumbs if that. We gotta move. Why? <laughs> because that's the way the story goes. Yeah, but- Let's move! I lost my gun back there. How did you lose your gun when you didn't even have it out? You just fell out and somehow became unconscious. Nobody took your weapon, which means there's no way you could have lost it. Somehow this guy has unlimited bullets. Not only that, but he keeps shooting the Taken as if that's going to do anything if they haven't been exposed to the light yet. Use the flares from the emergency box to hold them off while I get these boards off. Give me the gun. Yeah, <laughs> no can do, Blake. Are you kidding? Give me the gun! Flares aren't going to do much if you have around six Takens coming at you. Flares takes a long time to actually kill them. It's like he was asking to die. Where's my wife? I knew you were going to say that. I read it all before. You're a hell of a writer. Congratulations. You're going to bring about something glorious and terrible once we get you some uh, proper editorial control. What the hell are you talking about? Where's Alice? I want the entire manuscript, or she's gonna suffer bad. You know, Mont, you told Alan that you read it all before. How is that possible if Alan didn't finish typing the manuscript? I know Mont is being told what to do or say, but it's my job to call him out. First of all, Alan shouldn't have this much strength. The man came around longer than 10 seconds. You're going to tell me he punched Mont so hard it broke the ledge? Nah. There is no way you lost him when he was right there. Video game cliche, get the QTE three times in order to turn on the generator. I would like an explanation as to why there's rifle ammo in a bathroom. Ow. Ow, I am so glad you're here. Barry somehow knows Alan is here without alerting him. Notice how all the windows are barricaded. Barry Wheeler speaking. This is Rose. Rose? I found Oh, you sweet, brilliant girl. Could you and Mr. Wake come get them? I live in the trailer park outside the town. We'll be there in less than an hour. See you soon. Have a great day. Two cents here. One, Barry didn't question how in the world Rose received this number when she never even spoke to him. She spoke to Alan. Also, Barry didn't notice how off Rose sounded. Even when I first played this game, I knew something was up with her. Barry, I get you're insanely thirsty, but you need to stop and listen carefully. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. I'm curious to know how Sarah managed to get Alan's number when Alan left without giving her his number. She even asked for his contact too. Am I free to go? Well, we still need to talk about- Am I under arrest? No, of course not. But I need to know where you'll be staying so I can get in touch with you. I well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? Are you really asking that when you took both of them to Rose's trailer? That's something you asked before showing them where she lives. Welcome to... to... Oh dear, Mr. Wake. I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Alan, are you this slow too? Just don't be dumb enough to go inside her house. 
He went inside her house. Not only that, but they're both drinking the coffee she gave them. Wow, Rose, you have pictures of Alan Wake and all of his books right where you sleep? You have some issues. May I suggest you speak to a professional? Alan, for a fit guy, your stamina is unreal. You ran less than 10 seconds and you're already out of breath. You have some exercising to do. God knows what you've done to that poor girl. There is no evidence that shows Rose has been harmed by Alan. If anything, Alan and Barry are victims because they've been drugged. Sure, it's not Rose's fault since she was possessed by an evil entity, but Alan is not to blame here. For an FBI agent, you really suck at shooting. What were you aiming at? Oh, so you're going to tell me Alan can run more than 10 seconds, but he's fast enough to run from bullets? This level of inconsistency makes Alan Wake a perfect combatant for Mortal Kombat. What seems to be a trailer is thrown at Alan and somehow it doesn't kill him. Mind you, this was hard mode. Somehow Alan will survive this fall. He's a regular man with the stamina of a sloth and yet he'll prevail. Alice. There you go, Alan. Hartman. Hold up. Hartman, the last time we saw you was back at the police station where Alan almost broke your nose. At the end of the last episode, Alan was falling from a very dangerous fall which should have killed Alan. Then we see a hand reaching for Alan. Were you seriously stalking Alan just to bring him into your madhouse? Wow, talk about wasting time. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned, and you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations. Hartman, I would be inclined to believe you, but if what you're saying were to be true, where's Alice's body? If she actually did drown, her body would be floating and people would find it. You being a doctor should know that. You might have noticed the typewriter in your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. But if Alan woke up for the first time, how did he continue his story? By the way Alan woke up, it appeared to be his first time given the fact we see him opening his eyes for the first time since the fall. So Barry has been locked in the room for how long now? How did Barry know where to find Alan? Why wasn't Alan told he had a visitor in Harmon's office? Can somebody answer my questions? Alan, please. You're sliding back into the- Tell me one more lie and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, oh, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea- Harmon, shut up! I don't know about you, but the sync with their voices and mouth movements are very off. I promise you guys, this is not me nor my recordings. Alan, I get you're not trained with weapon handling, but you can easily be disarmed like that. Even someone who's not trained should know this. Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful. The antagonist tries to team up with the protagonist, cliche. Okay, so we see Harmon's bodyguard, but that's a little confusing because we didn't see him dying by the Taken. We actually witnessed Harmon being devoured in a way. Usually when someone was killed by the Taken, we usually fight that person such as Rusty back at his place. I'm crazy, but that's fine, Barry. <laughs> oh, you got that right, Al. You're barking mad. You are by far the craziest- But maybe that's inevitable when you deal with crazy stuff like this. It helps. This is happening, Barry. Alice, they never had Alice. She's trapped in the darkness at the bottom of the lake, but she's not dead. Ow. How can you know that? I know, Barry. I can... Ow. I... No, listen. I can bring her back. I can find her. There's something special about this place. The lake, it, it does something to the works of art created here. It makes them come true. But there's a catch. The dark presence, whatever that thing is, twists it to its own ends. That's why all of this is happening. It's using my manuscript to take over everything. Al, I believe you. It happened to Thomas Zane before. It happened to the Andersons. I believe you. Crazy or not, you're not delusional. Weird shit's going down. That's a fact. 
I'm on board, man. I'm with you. The Andersons knew about it, but they were too far gone to tell me with all the drugs they were on. But they wrote it down. There's a message somewhere at their farm, Barry. We just need to find it. Look out! You're the one driving, smart one. Instead of driving forward, how about you stop in reverse? <laughs> Okay, hold on. How did Alan and Barry separate? You mean to tell me that when the car stopped for a second, Alan was like, here's my stop. Let me get out. I had lost my gun in the crash. Barry was nowhere to be seen. On top of that, Alan lost his gun once again. The force plot the man is unbearable. You're gonna have to find your way around to the car now. I'll be waiting. Barry, just wait for me, okay? Stay here. It's suicide. Yeah, why in the world would Barry stay there with limited ammo? By this point, Alice should know that you will just get chopped into a Christmas turkey once you're out of ammo in the forest. Secure the area. You can catch up. Don't worry about it. I'm on the case. No matter how much the distance keeps increasing between Alan and Barry, Barry's voice will continue to sound the same as if Alan isn't moving. The sin here is not the fact that Barry somehow made it to the farm before Alan nor the horrible frame drop. It's the fact that he tried turning on the power and it wouldn't turn on until he was about to be killed. It's almost as if you can call the saving the hero at the nick of time cliche. But this is literally the best part of the game. The game gives you everything it has to offer while a bunch of them tries to swarm you from left to right. How is Alan out of breath after a cutscene? Barry isn't reacting to the massive high beam shot directly at his face. Okay. We need to find Cynthia Weaver. We'll stay here for the night and head back to town as soon as it gets light. Hey Al, lots of hours before dawn. Might as well get some rest. And by rest, I mean drunk. Come on, Barry, this is... Yeah. Alan, you're starting to lose your senses. You're going to intoxicate yourself when you have to be sober 100% of the time so you won't get an axe to the head? Yeah, that's a very smart move. I wrote it. It's my fault. That's right, James Joyce. It's your fault and you're gonna pay for it. Hold on now. Where did you come from? Why are you here alone? Every time we saw you, you seem to have plenty of other cops with you. How did you know where to find Alan? What proof do you have that Lisa Allen's arrest? I have so many unanswered questions. Oh. Wait, we're in jail now? Ow. Uh, Ow, this is not good. That about sums it up. Oh, I am never drinking again. That's what they all say, but for some reason, even when they know the consequences, drinking is the next thing they'll do. I never understood that. Maybe somebody can type it down in the comments and tell me why people do this? But we're stuck here. They're not gonna... been interviewed, Wake. I had some reading to do first, Sheriff. And let me tell you, it was an interesting read. Well, I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. It's all here. All the evidence, including conspiracy to murder a federal agent. Well, Agent Dildo, that isn't enough evidence to arrest Alan. You read this off of Alan's novel. Obviously, Alan is innocent if he hasn't committed any murder. Agent Nightingale, your opinion would matter more if you were sober and if I actually believed you were here on official business. Whoa! Get, get back in the cell, Stephen King. The only way you're leaving this place is over my dead... Wait a minute. God. That is a horrible reaction to what you just saw. The pills worked fast. The prospect of being awake. Sorry, but no pills worked that fast. I need to read it first. Everything needs to be just right. Zane tried to cut some corners, and it didn't end well. Okay, ready when you are. I'm sorry, Sarah, but I need to do this alone. Alan, there was no point on pointing that gun at her. All she's done was sacrifice her life to help you find your wife. If that's your way of showing gratitude, then there's no wonder why you're always so dull. I love how the game forces me to stop here just to let me find an abandoned vehicle that's right under the streetlight, which is a checkpoint. That might as well just let me drive the first vehicle.
Yo, seriously, this part eats more cheeks than any porn star alive right now. Yeah, okay. That car would have taken these woods and Alex to the next universe with that speed and force. So I'm going to take this as the final boss fight in the game. Is the game really giving Alan unlimited flare ammo? That's making things a little bit too easy if you ask me. Too easy in a final boss fight is not the way to go. Alan, falling like that will only split your body into several pieces once you land. Maybe taking a dive would be a much better way to jump off a cliff. A bad dream. Character wakes up being told they're having a bad dream and their dream cliche. It was just another nightmare. No. Everything's fine. You're home. It wasn't a dream. Everything's fine. Alan, I would have the same reaction if my wife starts sounding like a man. Oh, this isn't a sin. I just thought it was hilarious. Moving on. I'm sorry, but if I see some dark entity surrounding my apartment, I am out of there. The fact that Alan stayed makes me think something is up with him. I'm sorry, but how in the world is Nightingale alive? Last time we saw him, he was taken. See what I did there? And never heard from him again. You're lying. I loved him.